All right, it's me, Art, back again with another comic book review. This time we're going to review Nia Kaler by Dorothy Jean and Julie Anderson. And they're the same. Hey, y'all, it's me, it's Art, back again with a comic book review. This time, Nia Kaler, number one, by Dorothy Jean and Julie Anderson. They're the same team that... um. They're the same team that made Spirit's Destiny issue 2. So if you like their dynamic, it's more the same here. So Nia Kayla is set in the same Spirit's Destiny universe. In fact, it's revealed in this issue that their dads work together. And you'll see. So let's jump into it. The, in, the beginning of this um, comic kind of reminds me of... Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Miles was late for school. Parents were like Miles, you need to get up. So you you have that kind of into the Spider-Verse kind of vibe going on. Her dad's like, "Yo, wake up." She's like, "All right, dad." He's like, "You're running late. You gotta go to school." And so then we cut to a scene with the dad and the mom, and the mom's like, "Hey, you need to talk to Nia." And He's like, I will, I will, I'll talk to her later, I will, I will. And she's like, yeah, she's late, she's just like you. When you're in the military, you don't like waking up to do your drills. So that little reveal that he's ex-military is added right there at the beginning. That's a good use of foreshadowing. Things to come, we establish that he's ex-military. I want you to remember that. So then they kiss. It's not even a kiss. They look like they're about to kiss, but it doesn't happen. Then Nia sees, you know, her parents, Ew, that's gross, y'all kissing, I don't like that. And she's about 15, 16 years old, so she's a little too old to be grossed out by her parents showing affection towards each other. And for whatever reason, her and her mom has this tension. She's kind of like, you know, disrespectful towards her mom. And I noticed the same thing when I read Spirit's Destiny, the Spirit character had a similar attitude towards her mom. So, the mom's like, hey, we pay the bills, we can do what we want. And Nia's like, well, no offense, mom, I appreciate everything you do for me, but I just don't want to see y'all make out this gross. And so, the dad and Nia leave, and where are we at right here? They get in the car in this panel. I'm assuming they're driving to the school. And then in the very next panel, she's getting out of the car and she's at school. He like burns forever. Like, why are you such in such a rush to get out of here? But the weird part about it, they're driving. You have these two little kids right here. Like, are they playing in the street? What gives? This was like the quickest, the quickest, um, trip to school ever so <laughs> it's crazy so she's in the hall and she meets a girl and I'm assuming this is her girlfriend remember she doesn't like PDA or at least seeing her parents kiss but she's cool with kissing this girl until the teacher interrupts and the teacher's like hey uh, no PDA in the hallway so she tells this girl bye people are just messaging me um, she tells this girl bye. She heads to class. Teacher's like, hey, you're late. Get to class. And I didn't realize at first this is Spirit from Spirit's Destiny, which is weird because Julie also drew that issue, but it doesn't look like her in this book. So that I found that kind of weird. Uh, and when we talk about the art, I'll, it's a lot going on with this art. Uh, so anyway... It's established that Spirit and Nia are pretty much troublemakers. They do what they want. Um, they they kind of like don't respect too much of anyone. Um, that's what the narrative that I get reading this. The weird part about it, she refers to the Spirit character as Destiny, but the book is called Spirit's Destiny. You know, showing ownership. So, that's 
that's kind of weird because I'm like, wait a minute, her name is Spirit. I don't know. <laughs> but apparently her name, well, I just shook the camera. Let's stop that. But apparently her name isn't Spirit. Apparently it's Destiny or both. I don't know. Anyway, we cut to a scene with her dad. He's meeting up with this guy and... I'm assuming this is the bad guy. It's like generic bad guy. Like, hey, are they in there? And he's like, they don't look like they're trouble. And this guy's like, oh, yeah, looks can be deceiving. Trust. And I don't know why he didn't go in there, you know, with these other guys. But apparently the dad and Spirit's dad are holding this conference talking about this formula that they created, this serum. So... Again, Nia's dad and Spear's dad are both ex-military, but it's not established that they're scientists. They're not ex-military scientists. Apparently, they were, you know, foot soldiers. But anyway, they brag about how they created this super serum and how it's been used to kill terrorists, blah, 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 blah. You know, they created this for the people, to protect the people. It gives you enhanced speed, strength, endurance. Basically, they created Captain America's Super Soldier for, uh, Serum. So, they're bragging about that. And they're like, hey, we need investors. But I'm looking at it like, wait a minute. If y'all have all these government contracts and you're creating all these supermen for the government, those are huge contracts already. Why do you need more investors? What is your end game here? Because if you get government contracts, you're set. It is, and then it gets a little weird because they're like, hey, some of these guys in the audience look like some of our former enemies. Which would make sense if you have this serum that can create supermen and superwomen. You're going to have terrorist organizations in the room, you can have different government organizations, private militaries. So they should know what they're getting into. So it, there's that. So they're walking off and they're having a talk and they're like, well, we don't want this serum to get into the wrong hands. But you've already gave it to the government. You really think the U.S. government or whatever government is just using this uh, to save people and do heroic stuff. Come on now. So, go back to class. Apparently, uh, Nia and her girlfriend they have lunch together since they don't have class, at least that class. And people are throwing food. And you look over there and you can barely see her spirits in a fight. And they're like, whatever. So they sit down. Next you know, a football lands on the table. Nia gets covered in food. Notice she's covered in food right there. And, yeah, she's mad. She's like, who threw this? And this little girl right here. There's a lot of weird height dynamics going on in this comic. Like, people's heights seem to change from page to page, panel to panel. So, it's very weird. <laughs> Uh, there's definitely, the artist did not use a height chart when she uh, drew this. Very weird how people's height, they keep morphing. So, the short girl, and these are like the only white characters in the book, except for the evil white, I guess, I don't know if he's crime lord. I don't know what his deal is, just a rival corporation. Um, so, a lot of evil white people in this book. <laughs> so... She doesn't take shit. She's like, yo, I threw it. What about it? And then there's some issues with this girl doesn't like seeing Nia kiss another girl. She doesn't like gay seeing gay stuff. And it's, it's weird. I don't want to touch on that too much because Nia doesn't like, in a way you can look, look at it, she doesn't like seeing straight people kiss, but she's okay with her kissing another girl and wants everybody to be okay with it. And this girl's like, hey, I don't want to see that, you know, I don't want to see 
gay people kissing, and Nia has a problem with it to the point where Nia just decides to just get the football and not only attack the girl, but her boyfriend either, who's like, hey, you know, leave my girl alone. And Nia decides, hey, I'm going to take this football, I'm going to slap you with it, and I'm going to just pound this football as hard as I can into this girl's face. So, I don't know where the writer was going with this, what she was trying to say, um, but there's definitely some psychological stuff going on with this character, and the whole SJW thing is she's saying that, hey, if I'm gay, you got to accept it. If you don't like it, I'm going to do something about it. But that's just me assuming but it's apparent that Nia doesn't like seeing straight people kiss, or at least her parents. So there's that. So teacher comes out, takes her to the office, and this girl's face is just pound, pounded in. Like, her face should be broken, nose. And I don't see how she's not, Nia's not in handcuffs right now. She attacked two students, and I don't know where the guy went. I guess he's okay or just still knocked out cold in the cafeteria, but uh, she definitely has some anger issues. So anyway, her dad comes in. You know, he's like called. It's like, hey, come pick your daughter up. She's been in a fight. And this is the weird part. He's like, wait till I get my hands on you. Well, he says, Nia, wait till I get my hands on you. Very, like, sinister-like. Let's go back to that page. And then it, like, speeds off. Like, that's not normal dad behavior. Very weird. But the next panel, he picks her up. He's calm. He's like, hey, you know, let's go talk. You know, and kind of make light of the fight, even though she just seriously hurt two other kids. So they go to the park because why not? I mean, they can have this talk at their house, anywhere, or even in the car. They decide to go to the park. They get out. He reveals that, hey, I'm an ex-military. I used to work for this place, this organization called an agency. And she's like, what? He's like, yeah, I did some bad things. He's like, the agency, the army, military, they're all pretty much the same thing. And she seems shocked by all this. Like, what? What do you mean? Please elaborate. I'm confused. And that's when he, you know, tells her, like, the agent, the military, it's all the same thing. And then she's like, well, were you an assassin? I don't know where she jumped from him being in military to him being an assassin came from. You know, after he said, you know, I have to do, you know, some bad things to some people. And she knows this going back to earlier in the issue where it's established that she wants to follow in his footsteps and join the military. That's already been established. This is a military family. So it's weird seeing her reaction to this at this point that. Hey, Dad, you were in the military. It's, a, it's very weird reactions. So then he goes and tells her, and this is the big reveal, that, hey, me and your friend Destiny, say I call her Destiny now, me and your friend uh, Spirit, her dad, we created this formula to give people powers. And we experimented on you and her when y'all were babies. And she's like, what? Like, you did what? And apparently her her mom already knew this. That's why earlier in the issue, she was like, hey, you need to tell Destiny. So, yeah. Bad parent much? Sp experiment on babies much? And keep in mind, these were grunt soldiers. They were not military scientists, yet they're over there experimenting on their own kids. And then created this formula and sold it to the government who created Superman and Lord knows what else they did with it. And now they're like, hey, we need more investors because they want to make more of this drug. 
it seems more and more like their dads are the bad guys. So anyway, the guy from before, he sends some goons out. And they're like attacking them and stuff like that. And they use tranquilizer darts. Ah, oh, sorry. So he's out cold. And then all of a sudden, she like can fight, like using some martial art moves. She's all mad. But eventually, they're like, you know what? We're tired of this. And they stab her. Like, stab her to the point where we'll let the page load. This is what happens at the end. This is the big cliffhanger. That's a lot of blood. There's no coming back after you lose this much blood. And it's weird looking at the parallels between Nia Kayla number one and Spirit's Destiny number one. Spirit got killed at the end of that issue. She got ran over by a car and she was dead. And now this chick is dead. So it's very similar themes running throughout both of these comic books that Dorfees wrote. Um, there's not enough to really separate the two comic books. So, looking at it from a story standpoint, and looking at the promo art, you saw Nia in this cool samurai-like type armor, and the sword, and I was sold on this issue, seeing those images of her running around with the sword. Now, I would be okay if this was an origin story and she got that sword at the end. She found the armor. Or, you know, it was revealed that somebody taught her martial arts. I would be okay if this was that type of origin issue. But this book really doesn't do that for us. It doesn't give us that origin story. And knowing that she has enhanced endurance speed, strength, whatever, and she's attacking other students, you would think at some point her dad would have been like, hey, you're a little stronger than most kids. You shouldn't do things like this. But apparently his good parenting wasn't that good to tell her, like, no, you can never attack anyone. Or maybe he didn't think the formula worked. None of that's established. Now, if she suddenly heals, that's going to set problems for the Spirit's Destiny book because in issue two, people are mourning and her grandma has to make a deal with a demon to bring her back to uh, bring her back alive. So, if she, if Nia all of a sudden has a healing factor and the other girl doesn't and they took the same formula, that's also going to present some problems for future stories so we'll see let's talk about the art um let's talk about this art as i mentioned earlier there's a lot of problems with this art characters seem to change height from panel to panel from page to page and this is loading uh, if you watch my video top 10 mistakes new comic book artists make i recommend everyone Play that video for Julie Anderson. She needs to watch that video. She needs to study that video. Uh, let's just take this page. The perspectives in this comic book are all off. There's really no foreground, middle ground, background. She wastes a lot of space that's just empty. It's not alive. She doesn't feel it. And some things just seem to move from panel to panel. Like, for example... This window. Where's this window at here? It's not over here. Things just move. I don't even know what that thing is. Um, in some panels, she doesn't even bother drawing a background at all. Again, let's look at this panel. There's the door. They're standing here. Look at all this space here. Look at all that space. And when did her mom move from here, just from being beside him in this panel right here, to now she's way over there, and I don't even know where that came from. 
So it's a lot of that just empty space going on and the artist not paying attention to what she drew in previous panels. We're back to this panel again. They, she managed to get to school from one panel, one to two panels, to the one to two panels she got to school, and these kids are playing in the street next to a speeding car. It's little things like that, that someone that's experienced with storytelling, they would catch. There was two editors on this book. There was an editor and a co-editor. They should have caught these if the writer didn't. That's why you hire an editor to catch these simple mistakes. But the bottom line is the artist looking at these pages, she was she didn't care. She just wanted to get them done. Like you have this wide hall. She's right here. All of a sudden, generic backgrounds. It's like copy and paste. There's no life in these panels. That's a wide, super wide door. And this panel really tripped me out because I'm looking at the backgrounds and how everything just fluctuates here. It was very weird. Like what happened to that, I don't know if that's a laptop or paperwork that was right there. It's not there. That's something totally different. You know, even where this chalkboard is, behind the desk, I oh, shaked it again. You see it's kind of aligned with the desk here, and now the chalkboard has moved way over there. I don't know what happened to the world map in this panel, or this, everything just tends to move a lot in this book. You definitely need this book definitely needs a serious editor to go in and correct some of these mistakes but all in all I can't blame the editors well yes we can blame the editors for not catching these things uh, I don't know when at what point the editors actually they just edited did the copy editing on the script or if the editors actually saw the final pages that that part I don't know but Overall, Nia Kayla number one, looking at the story, it needs work. Um, doesn't really present the main character, Nia, in a positive light. She has issues with her mom. Uh, she has issues with straight people. And she's okay with her SJW narrative, if you will. But... I don't know where this book is going with the main character because there was nothing in here to make you root for her or explain why she's acting the way she is. Attacking people just because they don't like who you are or what you do is not the answer. And apparently from reading the script, this isn't the first time that Nia's done this. As far as the fighting and stuff like that. I don't know if the fighting was always over her sexuality or what. But apparently she has a lot of issues that she needs to work out. So art-wise, Julie Anderson is not ready to draw comic books. She needs to study anatomy more. She needs to study storytelling. She really needs to practice before she draws another comic book. Now, Saving Graces, I like the colors. The colors and the inker, they had a tough job to do. Uh, looking at what Julie left them with, they really had a tough job to do. We're going to rate this, you know, again, story. We look at the art. We look at the entertainment value for our dollar. I believe I backed this at $12 or $15, one of those. So we'll start with that. Entertainment value, I wasn't in entertained. I was more concerned, if that makes sense. Like, what's really going on here? Because I felt like I was just reading Spirit's Destiny all over again. There really is no separation between the characters. 
and the character traits. Um, there was no creativity put in here. And I kind of feel cheated that I did not get the girl on the cover. I wanted to see this girl on the cover. I want to see the sword. I want to see the cool armor. But there's not even a hint that any of that's going to come in the next issue. Art-wise, again, big epic fail on the art. Big fail. Again, perspective, background, storyboarding, characters switching sizes. A lot of problems in the art area that really weigh this story down. And we can forgive some of the story elements. Um, this is a really hard book to really review because... Reading it, and I read this issue three times. The only thing I can get out of it is that Nia has issues with her mom, she has issues with people, and her dad in spirits that are, you know, kind of up to no good. There's not really an established bad guy yet, or guys that are kind of, you know, checking out and want this formula, but. They're not like a big bad. And even their motivations aren't clear. So, rating, 1 out of 10. Um, I'm going to have to give it a 3. We're going to give it a 3 out of 10. Mainly because the art really drags this story down. And the story isn't clear. Aside from... Nia having issues with other people and things that are revealed early in the book as far as her dad being in the military and she herself is going into the military. She seems totally shocked by the fact that her dad has killed people before. And it's just weird that her mom and, and dad are cool with experimenting on children. So... That's it, uh, Nia Kayla number one. Uh, if you backed it, uh, digital copies are out. Fiscal ones will come in shortly. Hopefully issue two will correct some of these mistakes and clarify things. Uh, we'll see.